Hello YouTube, this is that Yi guy. I hope everyone's doing well. Today I have for you a detailed guide on the stronghold system. You can use the stronghold system to do powerful researches that will upgrade your account, upgrade your storage, as well as uh, your holding chances for all of your alts. Along with that, something I don't see a lot of people mention is that you can use it to craft expedition maps in order to find moon spread, star spread that can help even your main. And once at tier three, you can use this system to make a profit. So I'm gonna go into all of that detail. I'm gonna have down below a description uh, and as well as timestamps that let you skip to different features I'm gonna talk about. So you have an easier time navigating this guide. So let's just jump into it. Hopefully people find this useful. The first time you arrive in the stronghold, the game will go through a series of tutorial quests that are very intuitive and very simple. All you do is that it explains to you what the action energy is for the stronghold. It is something that constantly regenerates and with more research, you're gonna regenerate more of, of it more often. But to start out, it's gonna regenerate. Once it's full, you're gonna cap out but you can spend it on doing different actions inside your stronghold. The first building I want to talk about is going to be the lab. So the lab, you can be accessed down below in management or you simply go to it on your island. But you can go there to research uh, researches that can boost your account in different ways, along with boosting your alts and unlock crafting recipes that you can later use in the workshop that can really uh, do some powerful things. Now I'm going to go over some of the most powerful research you can get in your stronghold. Do not worry if they do not show up on your list of available researches. That just means that you either don't have the stronghold level yet, or you just don't have the prerequisite uh, research. You kind of have to work your way up or your character doesn't qualify to have that research. So you might have seen information floating around uh, with clickbait titles like this research can improve your honing chance. That is technically true, but that's something that only helps your alt characters. So you see here that for both tier one and tier two, there are corresponding researches that let you uh, increase the chance of uh, equipment honing by 20%. That is a huge boost but this research doesn't become available until you're one tier past where it's at. So when my character is already in tier two and tier one increase success rate doesn't help myself anymore, that's when I could unlock this research. What it does let you do is that if you choose to play an alt in the future, or if you want to play an alt now, just to experience with different classes, or you can just uh, use your auto farm for money, their success rate is gonna be drastically better uh, compared to your main. The next things you should research are increased action energy. As I mentioned, action energy is really important. It's used in pretty much everything you do in the stronghold. So whenever you can, you should use uh, these upgrades and then just increase the rate. You have a base regeneration rate of 100 but these research can increase it and in the long run that's really beneficial so if you see reduction of labor costs or workshop expansion you should definitely prioritize that in your research list and aside from that you can upgrade your own stronghold in different ways with research uh, you can make it more efficient you can increase the crafting slot and research slot uh, with a building upgrade and just everything you do in the research is going to help you in the long run. Another thing that's really good is that you have trade merchant contracts you can upgrade. So this is quite funny because when you upgrade the merchants, um, they're going to just wear different clothes. Their clothes get slightly fancier, becomes different color. But more importantly, what they sell you is going to be much, much better. Something that might help you is for you to go to unavailable research and to actually just go through and see if there's particular research that you're looking for. And for example, I want to know how I can 
you dispatch the ship, it will actually go and in unavailable research, it tells you the requirements that you're missing. So if it's in red, it means that's what you have to do. And for example, if I want certain merchant contracts, it actually tells you that you need the quest complete. And then if you click in, it will pull up a codex and uh, down here, it will tell you what you actually need to do in order to unlock it. So all of this is very intuitive and it's very well done. The workshop is going to be using a lot of your action energy to craft a lot of fancy things and it uses everything you gather with your trace skill such as the foraging, logging, mining, hunting, fishing, and excavating. All the resources you get, you're going to end up spending here. Uh, and all the fancy things you're trying to craft, you're also going to do here uh, under the different sections. Uh, you can make furniture that's more for late game when you want to decorate and make your stronghold look as good as possible. But this is also the place you're going to craft different tools. You're going to need different resources, of course, in order to do that. One thing I do want to mention, the most important thing, in my opinion, is these crafts. So the Yorn Archaeological Site Map and Punica Archaeological Site Map. These are going to help your main progress faster. As I was progressing my character through Tier 2 through Tier 3, I utilized this in order to gather Moon's Breath. And I went through and collected a lot of different samples and what I got each time I use one of these maps. So as you can see, I actually got quite a bit of Moon's Breath. There will be, there will be times when you get no Moon's Breath from attaching the map, but a lot of times you're going to get some Moon's Breath and you're going to get some of the crafting materials, the relics back every single time you run the map. If you take a look at the cost, each one you make costs you a certain amount of gold. And if you excavate the materials yourself, you're going to have that available. Or you can simply go to the market and buy these materials in order to use them in the craft. And if you want to do that, you go to traders and you go to excavating loot. And then you can buy the resources you need in order to make these maps. So the moon's breath you get from these maps is not going to be tradable. They are going to be bound. But on average, if you do enough with these maps, you're going to average about five moon's breath per map. And I've done the math on it it's going to be way cheaper than you trying to buy Moon's Breath off the marketplace. And for people who don't know, Moon's Breath is what you use to increase your chance of honing by a certain percentage when you upgrade. So as you can imagine, that's going to be helpful and something you should definitely take advantage of. As you move on to Tier 3, you're going to get access to Punica Archaeological Site Map. Now the crafting resources for that is going to be more expensive. The crafting cost is going to get more expensive. But the reason I still recommend it is because if you scroll down, you're going to see that with the Punica maps, you're still going to get quite a bit of goods. There is going to be a tiny chance of you getting a super rare uh, crafting kit as well. So if you're super lucky, you can get something that's worth multiple thousands of gold. And you see here that I was getting Solar Blessing, Solar Grace, and Solar Grace. Um, just sometimes you get nothing, but most of the time you get one or two solid things. One thing you might notice is that unlike the previous tier uh, where you get Moon's Breath, you're going to get Solar Blessings that are tradable. So you can actually take these and sell them to the market. And right now, even with the crafting cost at 39 gold, even with the material cost being quite significant, it is a profit in order to uh, collect them and just sell them back into the market. As I went and excavated, I sold the Adapt crafting kits for 252 gold-ish. And then I sold the Solar Grace for more than 100 gold each. Solar Protection, Solar Blessing, and they all sold for quite a bit of gold. So this is something you should consider. But as with everything, I'm not going to clickbait you and tell you that this is the best money making method. This is going to make you tons, tens, hundreds and thousands of gold. 
always check the current market price and kind of decide for yourself. Um, do, do the math and just kind of see how much it took you to uh, craft one of these and how much gold you really got back at the end. So that's all something you need to consider when you're crafting these. But overall, at the moment, as I'm posting this video, this is a profitable thing to do. The last thing about workshop is that there's an option to view different things. So example, you can untoggle the view craftable. This will allow you to see all the things that you can possibly craft in the workshop as well, along with the materials. That way you can plan accordingly. So for example, if I want to see what I need to make the master forging tool, I can simply uh, go here and see that I need the crafting recipe along with all these really hard to get materials. So, and I can click on it and it will say exchange stronghold Genif. This is a person I need to go to purchase this crafting recipe. And the last part of the workshop I'm going to cover is uh, something that a lot of people have confusions about. It's going to be the farm option. So all of these, you see that there's a tiny house icon next to the material you need to craft these items. What that means is that the materials you use is actually everything you gather from inside of your stronghold. So once your stronghold is high enough level, once your progression is high enough, you're going to have access to actually your private collection areas and these green portals will take you to those uh, locations there's one all the way to the south where you can chop wood where you can mine resources that no one else can compete with you on but overall this is less efficient uh, than if you just go out to the world to gather but the benefit is that you can use through all of your artisan energy uh, work energy very fast and it can kind of get you things uh, just that just you wouldn't be able to get if you're being a highly competitive server where everyone's trying to grab rabbit. This is, you can just go around and you kind of have your own private collection to yourself. If you have the time to use the work energy, great. If not, this is definitely an option you can consider. The thing I want to cover is going to be the station. This is where you can go in and you can dispatch the ships uh, and you can dispatch a crew and what they do is that it takes time for them to come back you can see how much energy it would take how much time it would take and what seals they're going to come back with these are the currencies that you're going to earn by sending them on these missions but you can also get bonus rewards such as pirate coin such as providence stone such as these uh, uh, hearts and things like that you can later trade for even more uh, of these seal currencies and same thing with if you don't have the time if you really want to you could potentially send them out to clear certain events for you they can use up your queue pass uh, they can use up your different uh, boss rush tickets they can use up your guardian soul collection but i don't recommend it because the reward you get is always going to be less than if you did it yourself and it's going to use that valuable energy from your stronghold that you can spend on other places. So now that you have accumulated a lot of the seals from the various activities, especially the ship dispatch, you can come down here. This is in the stronghold just down the stairs. And there's the NPC here that you can spend all the seals you got and purchase different uh, crafting recipes for all the tools that you need. And some of this, based on the rarity, is gated behind the item level of your main character. So, you can also spend the seals to exchange for each other. But I don't recommend exchanging seals because it's 100 for 65 and it's much less efficient. And then lastly, there's Technician Rondo, where you can convert resources into each other and you can convert resources into powder and powder back into resources so this is a way for you to kind of swap the resources around if you want the lower tier ones you can upgrade them to the higher tier if you're higher tier you can trade down to the lower tier in terms of manner this is where you can equip multiple things that you have researched the things you have found the unlockables you can actually equip that can give a general buff 
to your manor, uh, to your stronghold. So this is something that you can use for minor benefit in the end, but I wouldn't worry too much about it. But if you have the things required for it, you can definitely take advantage of that. And there's also the training camp where you can have your characters train and yeah, you can have them gain EXP if you wish. And this is kind of useful, but until you get to the late game, uh, until your MAME is so much higher level, it doesn't really help. The last one, knowledge transfer, I have an entire video dedicated to this. So all it does is that it will go through and help you complete the main storyline quest on another character. Uh, if you do a knowledge transfer on a level one character, it's gonna actually take them to level 50 and complete the main story and give them a 302 armor uh, if for the low price of 600 gold. And you can, at that point, use that character to go back and do side quests for all the rewards and things like that. Uh, but for the later ones, they're kind of expensive and at the same time, it doesn't provide you too much. What they do is they literally spend eight hours to just skip the main quest of the specific town. For example, if you just get to Rohendel, it will let you complete the main storyline quest for Rohendel. So it's not as worth it, but if for people who have a lot of money and not enough time, that's potentially something you can do. So if you would like to see how you can make the most out of a knowledge transfer, please refer to my other video on the channel where I explain how you can get pretty much all the green and blue engraving books you will ever need just by using the system. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm hoping this is helpful to some of you. And yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below in the comment or come to my Discord to ask them uh, directly. I will always try to respond as soon as possible but between my work schedule and me actually trying to play the game, doing the research in the game, uh, it might be slow in getting to you. But there are other people who are willing to help. So thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful weekend.